from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The president addressing the global supply chain issues at the G20. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, how his administration plans to tackle rising prices. Hope you had a sweet weekend, especially last night for Halloween. We're hearing reports that uh, trick-or-treat turnout was very good all around San Antonio. Good morning, everybody. We jump right into a new month. We're on fast forward for the rest of the year. It is Monday, November 1st. Good to see you. Sarah Costa back Happy in this morning. Happy to be here. Hi. Yeah, I, I, I gave out candy last night. My trick-or-treaters weren't as, you know, I didn't have the crowds. So they got extra dosings of just like, oh, hey. Like, I even saw some coming back. I'm like, hey, you want to come back again? Like, sure. I, and they said, oh, no, thanks. We already hit your house. I go, no, 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 I'm trying it's to okay. give you my candy. Everything must go. Yeah. Uh, Mike's here now, and he said they had a pretty good turnout, too. Yeah. I know some people were saying they were out of candy by about 7.30, 7.45 last night. Yeah, I had four big bags worth, and we uh, went through. We had a good crowd. I don't know if it was as good as maybe two years ago, but still, I mean, uh, a bunch of, bunch of kids out there, and one of the best was this one little guy comes up. He goes, my dad's got my bag. I'm just super tired. <laughs> <laughs> Tough work for collecting Getty. Anyway, it turned out as expected to be beautiful. You know, the humidity started eh, kind of flirting there in the afternoon, and then it dropped by evening hour, so it was really, really nice. Uh, I step outside this morning is still very nice, but you can kind of smell a little more humidity in the air. We've got a couple of clouds hanging around here and maybe a hint of some fog around Port S.A. as well as Castroville. Temperatures are... Yeah, mid and upper 50s, even a couple of low 60s around here. And these dew points, remember last week we were down in the, the low 40s for these numbers. Now we're back up into the mid and upper 50s. And these numbers are going to continue to kind of creep up somewhat throughout the afternoon. Not that it's going to be oppressively humid, but you'll notice it a lot more. Mold is on the low side this morning. And throughout the rest of the day, 56 degrees, partly cloudy, um, cool-ish. You know, and it's almost with that extra humidity, kind of a dampish sort of cool so light jacket's not a bad idea. And then later on this afternoon, we're going to make it up to 81 <laughs> degrees, mostly sunny skies. Tomorrow, more of the same, probably more humidity as well. Then changes come about on Wednesday and get ready for the end of the week. We are talking, especially on Thursday, grilled cheese and soup kind of weather. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Mark. Mike, thank you very much. New this morning, a man shot in what appears to be a robbery at an apartment complex on the north side. Police responded to the scene around two this morning. It happened at a complex on Patricia, which is near Parliament and West Avenue, not too far from Churchill High School. Officers found the man in the breezeway of the building. The man said he was on his way to an after party when he was shot in the rear end. He was taken to University Hospital and is expected to be OK. Police are still investigating this incident. In your morning headlines, flight cancellations skyrocketing at American Airlines. The airline canceled more than 900 flights yesterday, one third of it scheduled for the day. That brings Americans three days total to more than 1,800 canceled flights. The airline is blaming staffing shortages and high winds at a time shut down its busiest airport, Dallas Fort Worth International, late last week. American says it's hiring pilots and reservation <laughs> agents to gear up for the holidays. Overnight, President Biden wrapping up his G20 meetings in Rome with leaders from the world's largest economies. One of the major topics, the global supply chain. As ABC's Ike Ajachi reports, President Biden also announcing a new deal with the European Union that could help lower costs. President Biden hosting an event with 14 countries and the European Union to specifically address the global supply chain issues, causing everything from delays in shipping to rising prices for goods and services. Biden pointing to the pandemic. And in the pandemic is the ultimate key to unlocking the disruptions we're all contending with. The president says his administration is identifying bottlenecks and working with other countries to help make sure when COVID flares up, critical manufacturing continues uninterrupted. Now that we have seen how vulnerable these lines of global commerce can be, we cannot go back to business as usual. But after the meeting, the president was asked why American workers weren't returning to the labor force as soon as his administration had hoped. Biden says the economy is transforming, pointing to workers' capacity to negotiate for high wages. What you're seeing here is a combination of the desire of people to be able to change professions, to be able to do more and, and take care of their families. Still, efforts to speed up supply chain issues here at home continue. In Los Angeles, port officials applying pressure, voting to fine ocean carriers that hold shipping containers at ports for extended periods of time. The Biden administration pointing to the private sector. 
fundamentally it's up to the producers, the shippers, and the retailers, and we're doing everything we can to help them move those goods across uh, infrastructure that's often outdated. You know, people say to me, will Christmas gifts be delivered, to which I say, call FedEx. You know, that, that isn't what the government does. The president also announcing a deal with the EU. He says he'll scrap Trump era tariffs on steel and aluminum. And in exchange, the EU will get rid of tariffs on things like American whiskey and motorcycles. The White House says the agreement should help lower costs. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Moderna says the FDA needs more time to review its COVID-19 vaccines in teenagers. Yesterday, the vaccine maker said the administration wants to review the risk of heart inflammation in its vaccine in kids ages 12 to 17. Moderna predicts the review might delay emergency use authorization its vaccine for this age group until January. It also said the review would delay its application for its vaccine in younger children. The FDA is concerned about the risk of a rare type of heart inflammation that's linked to both Pfizer and Moderna's vaccines. The CDC has reported that the heart condition often resolves on its own and can be treated with drugs such as ibuprofen, although it is not a trivial condition. Disneyland in Shanghai, China shut down with thousands of families still inside the park over coronavirus concerns. Last night, tourists were put through mass testing after one person tested positive for COVID after visiting the theme park the day before. They were not allowed to leave until they had a negative test result. This morning, Shanghai city officials announced that all of the 33,000 people who had been at the park over the weekend had tested negative for COVID. Those people still not free to leave as of yet as they are expected to be tested again over the course of the next two weeks. An act of anti-Semitism, those were the words to describe a Torah scroll desecrated at Tau Kappa Epsilon at George Washington University. The blue powder you see there is laundry detergent. The fraternity's president told police it happened when someone broke in and vandalized the house yesterday. He said there was a Bible in the room as well, but only the Torah was vandalized, which is why he believes it was a hate crime. Now, D.C. police are investigating the fraternity, asked the Anti-Defamation League to look into the incident as well. 437, about 57 degrees. Still to come on GMSA, UTSA's head football coach getting a sweet deal. What this means for the rest of the team. And it was a late game. Astros fans breathing a sigh of relief this morning as the team keeps their World Series hopes alive. We have highlights from Game five coming up. It's pretty exciting when I got that notification on my phone mid sleep <laughs> last night. All right, 57 degrees at 437 this morning. What will our week look like after a fantastic weekend? Mike will let us know when we come back. Welcome back. Astros live to see another day. They rallied past the Braves and won game five in a game that went past midnight. Strohs win nine to five. Carlos Correa and the rest of the crew broke out the bats and just in time before the Braves won the whole darn thing. Houston, the first team to win game five on the road when tra trailing 3-1 in the series since the 1992. You ready for this? Atlanta Braves. Even they need an even, even bigger, now they need a bigger win to take home the championship itself. Series now goes back to Houston. Game six tomorrow night, 7.09 p.m. Of course, Atlanta still leads the series three games to two. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Yes, it is. Dallas Cowboys getting an exciting last minute win in Minnesota, even without Dak Prescott. Backup quarterback Cooper Rush passed for 325 yards and two second half touchdowns. Last one, a five yard throw to Amari Cooper with 51 seconds left in the game. Cowboys beat the Vikings 20 to 16 on Sunday night football. Cooper had eight catches for 122 yards. CeeDee Lamb had six receptions for 112 yards. Next up for the Cowboys, the Denver Broncos in Arlington at noon on Sunday. In Houston, Rams beat the Texans 38-22. Texans are 1-7 and seven on the season. Next up for them, the Miami Dolphins Sunday at noon. UTSA getting good news all around. The university has agreed to a contract extension with head coach Jeff Trailer through the 2031 season. There he is telling the team and staff yesterday afternoon they're pretty pumped about it. The deal is worth, ready, $28 million through now, between now and 2031. UTSA announced that they will increase the salary pool for assistant coaches as well as support staff. Roadrunners also moved up the latest AP poll, the number 16. The team had a bye week this past weekend, but they faced UTEP 
on Saturday night, and that game will be nationally televised. Spurs just beat the defending NBA champs, the Bucks. Now San Antonio taking on the Pacers tonight at 6 p.m. at Indiana. The Silver Black are hoping for back-to-back -back wins. And that's a look at morning sports. Got some happy South Texas uh, sports fans out there. That Cowboys win, the Astros win. Whew, I'm excited for tomorrow. Going to be a good yeah. day. Yeah. Right now we are at 442, about 57 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, a look at the weekend box office, which movies were at the top and which ones flopped. At Election Day is tomorrow. What you need to know before you cast your vote, vote coming up after the break. We know Halloween was yesterday, but we received so many viewer pictures. We wanted to show a couple more this morning. This is Ursula from The Little Mermaid. I love your costume. Good job. And then we've got Freddie Mercury from <laughs> Queen. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks so much for sending in those Halloween pictures. We love seeing them right here on GMSA. Building wind turbines is a fast growing industry in the effort to produce clean energy and slow climate change. ABC's Ginger Z has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, right now, 69,000 wind turbines from coast to coast are churning out clean electricity, in part in effort to slow global warming. And of course, the wind business is booming. So when you talk about the size of a wind turbine, the average one is about 300 feet high. That's like the Statue of Liberty. And from blade to blade, they can be more than a football field wide. Ava Gonzalez is a wind service technician, hoping to leave a better tomorrow for her family. The reason I made the transition from the oil and gas industry, because I realized that I wanted to start taking care of the environment. Coming up at 7 a.m., I'll be right there on top of a wind turbine to tell you all about the fast growing industry, something that could be a game changer. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ginger Z, ABC News, New York. The election day is tomorrow for the Texas Constitutional Amendment elections. Voters will decide on eight proposed amendments in the statewide election. The proposals were approved by the Texas House of Representatives and the Texas Senate this past session, but must be approved by a majority of voters before they are included in the state, state constitution as law. The amendments cover a wide range of topics, including taxes, judicial eligibility, religious freedom and development, Votes can be cast in person or by mail. You can find more information about this election on KSAT.com. And stay with us for election day results right here on KSAT and KSAT.com tomorrow. Last night, perfect weather. It was warm yesterday. Like during, during the afternoon, I got warm. Mm -hmm. I was in an ET costume with a blanket. I got warm. Right. Took it off. And then at night when I was passing out candy, I didn't really have the blanket on, but I had the, I borrowed Elliot's sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that was perfect. It was perfect. It did start to cool down last night. It turned out really nice for Halloween overall, Mike. Yeah, it really was. And, and like you were talking about, yesterday during the day, it, on the direct sun, yes, it was very warm. And that humidity was like, oh, no. And then it decided to just trim ever so slightly. And yeah, right as the sun was going down, it was really, really nice last night. And this morning, it is not oppressively humid, but you can kind of smell the humidity when you step outside. We have uh, partly cloudy skies as of right now. And the these dew points measure moisture in the atmosphere just compared to yesterday morning, which was actually a little higher than the previous day, but it's up nine degrees here in town. It's up 23 in Rock Springs, that much more humidity because it was obviously bone dry out there to the uh, west. And we are going to be seeing uh, the humidity be okay today. It'll start to creep up. You kind of notice it a little bit and then really uh, sort of move on in here throughout the day tomorrow and early on Wednesday. The exact timing of the front on Wednesday. Some models have it a little earlier, some a little later, but it is going to be during the day on Wednesday and then we really drop down uh, by the end of the week and it's going to be just kind of a dare I say kind of a raw day, especially starting off on Thursday. So here's what the uh, computer model looks like. We're going to have a lot of sunshine later on today. A couple of clouds hanging around here, some clouds tomorrow morning and then partly cloudy skies throughout the rest of the day. And then clouds on Wednesday. We'll have a couple of uh, sprinkly showers hanging around here. 
And then we have the front moving on through. Looks like about mid late afternoon with this computer model. We'll have some showers, even a couple of thunderstorms developing. It's going to be overnight into Thursday. And this kind of pushes things out a little, I think on the, the quick side, we'll have uh, kind of first half of the day some leftover rain, especially down to the south. And then we will clear out in the afternoon, or at least the rain will be clearing out. We'll still have, uh, we'll see some sunshine mixed on in here, but much, much cooler temperatures as well. We're only going to be in maybe the low 60s for high temperatures on Thursday as well as Friday and low temperatures are going to be dropping into the, the uh, 40s and we'll have some rain around on Thursday. So yeah, especially in the morning, it's going to be kind of a, a raw start. Weekend though is setting up to be sensational with nice pleasant temperatures and then plenty of sunshine. Look at that. We were looking at, uh, well, now the coldest temperatures of the season, six degrees. That's it in Cutbank, Montana, as of right now. So a big, huge push of colder air is going to be getting its way down in here as we move toward the middle part of the week. So today, fairly mild, 75 degrees. So that's already up to almost the normal high at noon. Then we're going to be topping off at 81 with a lot of sunshine. Humidity is going to be there, not ridiculous and then well I did trick-or-treat forecast didn't take that graphic out of there it was great for that but over the next seven days we are going to have uh, temperatures in the low 80s again tomorrow more humidity notice how the lows stay in the 60s Wednesday is going to be transition day actually that front may lie in the hill country late tomorrow up to the north but then move on through here and look at that only 63 on Thursday We'll have some rain around Wednesday as well as Thursday, and then we clear on out. Yes, the, the weekend looks spectacular. And drum roll, please. Set your clocks back early Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Man, oh man, it is the most wonderful time. It's literally the best the time of the year for us. <laughs> it's awesome. God's time, as my mom says. Back to God's time. And mama's right. Thank you very much, Mike. 451, about 57 degrees. Coming up next, look at the newest members of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Here are all your lottery numbers this morning. Starting out with pick three, 990, Fireball 8. Daily four numbers, 3379, Fireball 9. Cash 5, 1819, 24, 26, 33. Text Texas Lotto 3712 14 26 45 and Powerball 523 28 43 57 Powerball 19 Power Play 2. Well, not much changed at the box office over the Halloween weekend and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame adding 13 new members. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. The Emperor asks us to bring peace to Arrakis. House of Trades accepts. Halloween weekend at the box office, pretty much the same as last week, with Dune remaining on top. The sci-fi epic earned $15.5 million for a two-week domestic take of $69.4 million. Let's hunt him down. Halloween Kills hangs tight in second, another $8.5 million there, with No Time to Die still holding third. A disappointing sixth-place tie debut for the horror flicks Antlers and Last Night in Soho. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has 13 new members, among them Tina Turner, Jay-Z, Foo Fighters, The Go-Go's, Carol King, and Todd Rundgren, all formally inducted Saturday night in Cleveland. And fellow Rock Hall inductee and Red Hot Chili Peppers singer Anthony Kiedis is 59 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. 456 and 57 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, what President Biden is proposing to make real changes when it comes to our planet's climate. And the trial begins for the man accused of a deadly shooting during protests in Wisconsin from last year. The challenging task ahead of testimony coming up. Ahead on GMSA at 6 later this morning, looking to do some home renovations. We'll tell you whether you should DIY or perhaps bring in some professional help. Taking a live look at the roads out there. Not much going on. Samuel King is in for Stephen Cavazos this morning. He'll have all the updates on our traffic when we come back. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Fire at an abandoned house on the west side is under investigation. Plus... Day two of the climate conference in Glasgow is kicking off today with President Biden arriving from Rome. I'm Rena Roy in Scotland and I'll have more coming up.
Pretty perfect weather for Halloween and trick-or-treaters last night. Will this weather continue through the week? Mike will have his forecast in just a bit. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday. It is November 1st. Which means it's time for No Shave November to kick off. That's right. We have a few whiskers showing up this morning. <laughs> Mike O'Shea looking dapper as usual <laughs> over there. I don't know about that yet. It just looks kind of eh, like I forgot to shave. But anyway, yeah, it is for very good cause. Raise awareness for uh, men's health issues and uh, just go to the website. Website No Shave. We are Team KSAT, and you can donate. There's about, uh, well, I think, about 10 different uh, charities, and that uh, we have picked. So you can, and remember, it's all big, a big team effort because we came in, I think, fifth place in the nation last year, Team KSAT. So thanks to all of you for donating. So you're going to see us get a little furry here over the next uh, 30 days. 56 degrees right now. Dew point stands at 53. So not bad. I mean, not as dry an air as it was late last week, but that's still fairly, uh, fairly comfortable and we're going to make it up to right around the low 80s later on today. Nice looking day. Uh, Humidity is going to start to work its way back in here a little bit more as time rolls on not only today but also tomorrow. The aquifer went up on yesterday's reading one tenth of a foot and the allergens mold is on the low side. There is a hint. We've got mostly clear skies and with some of this humidity trying to return there's a hint of fog right there around uh, just Ca uh, Casterville. That's it as of right now. So no problem out there. Just kind of keep an eye out here and there. Uh, we've got moisture coming in here at the uh, mid and upper levels of the atmosphere as well. So of course we had that just bone dry air upstairs over the weekend, which is why we had those vivid, vivid blue skies. Still going to be a good looking day, maybe more of a milky shade of the sky later on today, but uh, sort of splitting hairs. Coolish this morning, not cold, but with some of the extra humidity, it's almost that kind of dampish, sort of coolish feeling out there. I'd grab a jacket and then you won't need it later on today. Kind of humid. Not real humid, but just kind of humid today. And then to, uh, tomorrow, more of the same. More humidity than Wednesday. We have the cold front moving through here. We're going to have some showers on Wednesday. Temperatures will be down uh, about 5, 6 degrees or so. Uh, we'll be in the mid-70s. And then much cooler on Thursday and wet for about the first half of the day on Thursday. Kind of a raw kind of a day. And then weekend looks absolutely fantastic. We're setting up for a beautiful fall weekend for the first one of November. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King is here. Long time no see. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Stephen taking a day off today. And here's a look at Loop 410 on the west side at Ingram. We had some construction here this weekend. Those southbound lanes were closed all the way uh, down past uh, 151. But it looks like uh, that construction has wrapped up uh, this morning. You can see traffic actually flowing there. So let's take a closer uh, look here. And this has filled in just a minute ago. This was blank. So those lanes have reopened on the west side after that weekend closure. So that's good news there. And let's take you up here to uh, east of San Antonio. If you're coming in from Seguin and New Braunfels, things looking uh, good. 25 minutes coming in from New Braunfels. 28 minutes coming in from Seguin this morning. 25 minutes coming in on I-10 from Bernie. A lot of this construction that we've seen overnight should be wrapping up. We'll have another update coming up. Mark, Sarah. Thank you, Samuel. New this morning, firefighters investigating a fire at an abandoned house on the city's west side. Firefighters got the call just after 10 last night. The house was on Cordelia Street. That's near Southwest 30th Street and General McMullen. The house was boarded up and firefighters were able to put the flames out quickly. No reports of any injuries. In your morning headlines, world leaders from nearly 200 countries arriving in Scotland today, including President Biden, who's expected to land in Glasgow from Rome later this morning. They're gathering for one of the most important climate summits in years. ABC's Rena Rory is in Glasgow. As she reports, President Biden is expected to address the conference to stress the U.S. is committed to making real change to protect our planet. Day two of COP26, or Conference of the Parties, is all about the world leaders from nearly 200 countries. They'll be kicking off crucial negotiations by laying out their visions to tackle climate change. I think you're going to see we've made significant progress and uh, more has to be done, but uh, it's going to require us to uh, continue to focus on what China's not doing, what Russia's not doing, and what Saudi Arabia is not doing. The annual summit is considered especially pivotal this year. Experts say the clock is ticking and that nations need to act fast to prevent catastrophe. I know that we have an unprecedented negotiations agenda ahead of us, but I believe that this international system can deliver. It must 
deliver. The goal of the two-week conference, come to a written agreement on how to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, phasing out coal, and allocating the finances for that. We must make progress here in Glasgow. Diplomats and climate experts will also review progress on the Paris Climate Accord to help prevent the average global temperature from rising more than 1.5 degrees Celsius compared with levels before the Industrial Revolution. But a recent analysis by the UN showed even if nations met their current targets, the planet could still see that temperature increase 2.7 degrees Celsius by the end of this century. The rapidly changing climate is sounding an alarm to the world to step up on adaptation, to address loss and damage, and to act now. And many are concerned about the success of this year's conference with leaders of some top polluters like China and Russia not in attendance. Rena Roy, ABC News, Glasgow, Scotland. There's a reason White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki did not travel with the president to Europe. She is now in quarantine for COVID. Saki said she apparently caught the virus from one of her family members. The press secretary says she put herself in quarantine last Wednesday when she found out members of her household had COVID. Yesterday, she tested positive. In a statement, Saki says her symptoms have been mild because she received the vaccine. Saki last met with President Biden on Tuesday, but says she was outside wearing a mask. It was more than six feet apart at the time. A trial of a young man who shot and killed two people during a violent night of protest last summer in Kenosha, Wisconsin, begins today. The challenging task will be seating jurors who haven't already made up their minds about Kyle Rittenhouse. He was 17 years old when he traveled from Illinois to Wisconsin during protests that happened in August of last year after a police officer shot Jacob Blake. Rittenhouse faces life in prison if he is convicted on one of the homicide counts against him. The judge is hopeful, though, that they can pick the 20 member jury pool in a day. The trial is expected to last two to three weeks. Back here at home, 506, about 57 degrees. Coming up on GMSA, how a Southside family is using their elaborate Halloween decorations to bring positivity to the Southside. Plus, Day of the Dead officially beginning today. A look at how Mexico City is celebrating the time honored holiday when we come back. 57 degrees at 506 this morning. Mike says we are going to be seeing a cool front later in the week. He'll explain when we come back. Well, people all over Mexico are preparing to celebrate Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. This is a look at the parade in Mexico City for the holiday. It's a yearly celebration to remember and honor loved ones who have died. The holiday is a colorful and lively event celebrated today and tomorrow. Families gather in cemeteries to dance and sing and build altars known as ofrendas made of photographs, bright marigold flowers and special food and drinks and tokens that were cherished by their lost relative. Back here at home, hundreds of kids visited a Southside home known for its elaborate Halloween display yesterday. Reyes family hosts this display for trick or treating, saying it's all about shining a positive light on the South Side. They've held this massive display for over 40 years at their home around East, East Filaret. From cocoa decorations to spooky animatronics, the family spends at least $800 a year for the event. They've even made safety adjustments during the pandemic, like having a 10 foot long candy shoot. All in all, they say they are proud to be a part of the San Antonio neighborhood family tradition. What I love about this is, is uh, how when the parents used to bring their kids and now the kids are bringing their parents back. After all that we've been through for COVID, I think we're all deserving of that feeling safe again and being happy again. And on top of that, the family handed out at least 700 candy cups the kids last night. Sarah had a side note on this family. Yeah, I actually got to interview them um, when we featured them for our porch parade uh -huh. and they were our winners. They, I, they, they go all out every holiday, not just Halloween. They go out all out fiesta, uh -huh. Christmas. They are just a wonderful couple there and I love look at that. I Pretty love nice. that. Well, you know, it's popular when they've got a line going right Yeah. down the street. Way to go, guys. It's like lining up for Spurs playoff tickets or something. <laughs> Now that would be a treat. It would be. All right. Well, fantastic uh, way to wrap up the Halloween weekend. Right now, 512, about 57 degrees. Well, if you use the What's Up app, you might want to make sure you have an updated phone. Details coming up after the break. 
Still feeling the Halloween spirit? Want to share a couple more viewer pictures sent in to us. This is little Sophia dressed as a unicorn, all <laughs> celebrating her first Halloween yesterday. Super cute. And this is a Book of Life costume from the children's movie, and it's perfect for Dia los Muertos or Day of the Dead, which officially we're celebrating today and tomorrow. You look amazing. Thank you so much for sending in our Halloween pictures. We love to see them. Outside with uh, Transcad right now, Samuel King in for Stephen Cavazos this morning. Great to have him here. The roads uh, traffic's looking really light. I think a lot of folks last night were either focused on Halloween or watching the World Series, perhaps both. We'll be right back. Why is La Roche-Posay recommended by over 90,000 dermatologists worldwide? Because we bring you effective skin care that makes a difference. Like La Roche-Posay Double Repair Face Moisturizer with dermatologist recommended ingredients including ceramide and niacinamide. Double action helps repair skin's protective barrier after one hour and provide 48 hour hydration. So no matter your skin type, even sensitive, you can have healthy looking skin with La Roche-Posay Double Repair Face Moisturizer. For skin that never holds you back, don't settle for silver. Number one for diabetic dry skin. Number one for psoriasis symptom relief. And number one for eczema symptom relief. Gold Bond. Champion your skin. Did you know some deodorants may not last all day? Secret works immediately and is designed to last for up to 48 hours. With Secret, keep it fresh. Available in over 10 amazing scents and aluminum free. Secret. 516 heads up. WhatsApp will soon stop working on phones with older operating software on them. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, millions of people who rely on WhatsApp are losing access to the app today. Dozens of smartphone models are affected, including older Samsungs and iPhones. Some phones will be blocked from WhatsApp for good. Others will work once they're updated with the latest software. Computer maker Lenovo is creating some buzz with a leaked picture of a ThinkBook Plus with a second screen to the right of the keyboard. There's speculation that a pen or stylus on the computer means that the second screen is for drawing. It's unclear when the computer will debut. And finally, Roblox, a popular gaming platform, is back up and running after a three-day outage. The company blames the problem on an internal system issue, denying claims that it was linked to a promotion from Chipotle. More than 50% of Roblox players are under age 13. Now, during the outage, some users were forced to go outside and play with friends. Oh, the humanity. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Ah, oh, darn. Too Darn, bad. outside? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I still play outside. It's hard to get me back in. I understand. <laughs> 517 on your Monday morning, November 1st. Samuel in for Steven. Hi, well, Samuel. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Mark. It is a good time of year to be outside and not inside with the sun and everything, and it's not humid. So it's a good idea. Get outside, especially after school. But taking a look at uh, traffic this morning, this is uh, Loop 410 at Ingram. We mentioned earlier uh, that that sort of construction had uh, cleared up, so that's good. But we do have a problem. This is uh, far north Bear County here, just uh, north of Boulevardy Road, a crash at 281 at a state gate, so heading uh, northbound. So your travel time, no one 281, still looking good. Five to six minutes in each direction so far, still early uh, this morning. So uh, that that's good. But again, just watch out for for that crash again, just north of Boulevardy Road this morning. Uh, we mentioned a construction on the west side. This is a uh, loop 410. Now that both sides are open after that weekend closure for road work, seven minutes in each direction. 70 miles an hour. I think that's technically a little above the speed limit there, but that just shows you how well traffic is flowing when there's not many cars on the road. We'll continue watching this throughout the morning, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Michael, good morning to you. Good morning. What's shaking? Uh, we've got a big front moving on through here by midweek. So this morning we're starting off a pleasant light jackets. Not a bad idea. Humidity is OK, but by the end of the week you will definitely need a coat and an umbrella thrown in as well. So yesterday we made it up to 82 89 Pleasanton, a couple of 90s on the map and today about the same situation. We're going to be uh, right around the upper 70s, low 80s all around the metropolitan area and the humidity is going to be 
noticeable, not extreme, but you gotta kind of feel it out there a little bit more, even more so than yesterday afternoon. Yesterday started to creep up ever so slightly, and then it did drop down uh, by about trick or treat time. So it was absolutely fantastic yesterday. All right, here's what's going on with dew point temperatures. We're in the mid and upper 50s right now. Big difference from where we were, especially Saturday morning and those couple of mornings late last week and throughout the rest of the afternoon. Again, it's going to be mm, humidity will be there. It'll be back tomorrow as well and starting to uh, creep up a little bit more in the afternoon hours. Same thing early on Wednesday. Then we're going to start to see that front move through here and that's going to be about to uh, say midday on Wednesday. Right now a few clouds, a mm, couple of them just coming in here from the uh, west and from the southwest. Most everything though in the country as you can see is moving pretty much straight west to east. So we still have this zonal pattern which keeps our temperatures at or a little bit above normal. No big changes in the weather with this kind of a pattern. Now, obviously, there's a whole heck of a lot of snow up there around Nebraska, northern Kansas, and obviously the higher elevations into the Rocky Mountains. Here's what's going on with the uh, computer model, and we're going to have lots of sunshine today. A couple of clouds mixed on in. Same thing tomorrow. Uh, maybe a few more clouds here and there, and then again on Wednesday. That's when we'll start to see some rain work its way on in here, and it really depends. Some models have this moving along a little bit quicker. Some have it kind of waiting somewhat, but there will be a couple of showers on Wednesday and then especially overnight into uh, Thursday, and that's when the much colder air works its way on in here during the late afternoon and evening hours of Wednesday into Thursday, and then we're going to be clearing out quite nicely. It's going to be some beautiful fall weather as we get in toward uh, Friday and the weekend, and it will be on the, uh, the kind of cool side, but I don't think anybody's going to complain about that. 75 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies, and then a high temperature. We're going to make it all the way up to 81, so we will be on the warm side of things, and then tomorrow, more of the same. It's not going to be quite as low in the morning. We'll be right around the low 60s, so a bit more humidity, up to 81 again. I think a couple of more clouds around here. Front moves through on Wednesday and we will have some showers around and then especially overnight into the first part of the day on Thursday. And look at that only 63 degrees on Thursday lows in the 40s. Then Friday morning, Saturday morning. Great looking weekend is setting up very excited, especially for that fall back time. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mike. Right now we're at 521, about 57 degrees. Coming up next, a unique, unique event in Tinseltown to celebrate an actor and LA icon. What made this event so special? That's after the break. Big three numbers, 990, Fireball 8. Daily four numbers, 3379, Fireball 9. Cash 5, 18, 19, 24, 26, 33. Texas Lotto, 3, 7, 12, 14, 26, 45. And Powerball, 5, 23, 28, 43, 56, Powerball 19, Power Play 2. In the spotlight, some surprising movie news and a special event in Tinseltown. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Talk about a time warp. The Rocky Horror Picture Show is back on the box office chart 46 years after its release. According to The Wrap, Disney, which now owns the rights to the film, says Halloween weekend screenings brought in $250,000 in ticket sales. Midnight screenings of the cult classic have been around for decades. This extends the longest theatrical run in movie history. People in some of the darkest moments of their life, he is like a bright shining light that comes forward and gives you hope. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti and others paid tribute recently to Danny Trejo as the actor, entrepreneur, and L.A. icon was immortalized with a wax likeness at Madame Tussauds Hollywood. It was a unique ceremony even for Tinseltown. After all, how many events feature the guest of honor's own legendary donuts served quite like this? Heading for a sugar fix in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Newsroom. Right. Yeah. Some wax, wax figures look off there's something wrong. that one looked pretty pretty good close to i don't know they're all terrifying to me <laughs> yeah a little bit <laughs> 526 still about 57 degrees we'll still head on gmsa a big topic of discussion covid 19 vaccines for children ages 5 to 11 one doctor breaks down some concerns when it comes to the virus versus the vaccine it is a big week for the u.s supreme court and for the future of abortion here in texas details after the break and ahead on GMSA at 6, the latest on a deadly shooting at a Halloween party in Texarkana. Police there say the suspect has turned himself in.
Tomorrow is the day Texas voters will decide on eight proposed constitutional amendments. We'll get you ready for Election Day coming up. 57 degrees at 529 this morning. Mike says we can expect a cool front later in the week. He'll explain in just a bit. It was a picture perfect weekend around here for Halloween. Good morning, everybody. We jump right into Monday and November 1st. Starting No Shave November. Mark didn't forget to shave. This is on purpose. That's right. We are continuing our tradition and a number of guys here at KSAT are participating this year. I think we're up to a team of about 15 for Team KSAT. And hopefully we're, I mean, got big shoes to fill because last year we were number five in the country as far we're, as uh, donations groups. from uh, all you folks out there. So please donate again. A lot of great causes. And uh, this morning, uh, by the way, talking about temperatures, so 57 right now. Saturday morning got down to 46 degrees. That was the coldest we've seen here in town since all the way back into about the third week of March. So obviously not as cold anymore. We've been getting a little bit milder. However, by the end of the week, we may be uh, kind of rivaling that as far as low temperatures. 56, 53 is the dew point, which means a lot more uh, moisture around here. So would, no way we could drop down to 46 degrees because you can't drop down below what the dew point temperature is. A little bit of a breeze out of the north and uh, Kerrville's at 52, 51, Fredericksburg and Rock Springs at 63. A little bit of mold is showing up. That's the only allergen as of right now. And throughout the day, we're going to make it up to 75 at noon and uh, right around 80 later on today. We are going to have a nice looking day today. A couple of extra clouds hanging around here and the humidity notice it not too bad it will start to go up tomorrow then big front moves through here by the middle of the week details on that coming up in just a minute traffic authority samuel king's in this morning good morning sir anything big going on oh we're still watching uh, some things here on the west side mike good morning to you good morning everyone out there stephen taking the day off this is a loop 410 at ingram we have a stalled vehicle at uh, culebra so that accounts for those flashing lights you see there in the distance. So let's see how that's impacting traffic here uh, with our look at our travel time. Still looking fairly good. Seven minutes each direction on Loop 410 between 151 and I-10 this morning. So that's uh, good news there. Still watching this situation here at Bulverde Road or just right at Bulverde Road. Basically 281 at a state gate, a crash there. Crew still uh, on the scene. And let's see how that's impacting the travel times up there. Not really uh, impacting things too much. Or it's a good thing at this time of the hour, not as many people on the roads. We'll see how that goes through this morning. So if you're coming in from Boverdian 281 southbound, that's 25 minutes into downtown, 16 minutes on 35 from Lytle, 19 minutes coming in from Castroville on Highway 90. So things looking good this morning. And we'll have another update coming up. Sarah and Mark. Thank you, Samuel. It's definitely not the ending to a night out that a man was expecting. He's in the hospital being treated for a gunshot wound. San Antonio police say he was shot at a Northside apartment complex on Patricia Street. That's near Parliament Street and West Avenue. Our Katrina Weber there is live. Now, Katrina, we understand he told police he was there for a party. Yeah, he told police that he came here to the Tuscany Park Apartments to attend an after party. Instead, police say he found someone who was after his money. The victim who's in his 20s told police that he was robbed by the same person who shot him. Uh, police got here a little bit after 2 o'clock this morning. They say that that man was wounded in his backside. They found him near one of the buildings toward the back of the apartment complex. That man was rushed to a hospital and is stable, and whoever shot him took off before officers arrived. The police did not say uh, what exactly was taken from the victim by this shooter. And they also did not give a description of the person uh, who shot and robbed that man. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Election day is tomorrow for Texas constitutional amendments. Decide on eight proposed amendments to this in the statewide election. The proposals approved by the Texas House and Senate this past session, but must be approved by a majority of voters before they are included in the state constitution as law. Amendments cover a wide range of topics, including taxes, judicial eligibility, religious freedom and development. You can find more information about this election on KSAT.com. Stay with us also for Election Day results.
In your morning headlines, the Supreme Court will hear arguments in two cases challenging the state law that bans abortions after six weeks in most cases. One case was filed by abortion providers, the other by the Justice Department, but both say the law conflicts with Roe v. Wade, which legalized abortion nationwide any time before viability, which can occur at around 24 weeks of pregnancy. Today's arguments will focus on the unusual construction of the law. Texas officials aren't allowed to enforce it. Instead, private citizens from any state can bring a civil suit against anyone who helps a pregnant woman trying to get an abortion. The ban will remain in effect while the legal challenges play out. This week, kids 5 to 11 could be eligible to roll up their sleeves for a COVID-19 vaccine as the authorization process for Pfizer's vaccine for that age group rolls right along. CNN's Britt Conway has more from doctors who break down some concerns some concerns of the virus versus vaccine. You're going to do great. And go. And the go ahead for Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for kids 5 to 11 could happen this week. Recommendation of emergency use authorization from the FDA's vaccine advisors. Check. Official EUA from the FDA. Check. The CDC's vaccine advisors are set to vote tomorrow, and then the CDC director is expected to officially recommend it. So kids 5 to 11 could be getting their shots as soon as Wednesday. This is awesome. There are no serious side effects given this lower dose of the vaccine to this lower group of kids, and it still protects kids from getting the infection. But only about a quarter of parents say they'll get their kids vaccinated right away. Two thirds say they're worried it could affect their child's future fertility. There's nothing in the data uh, to suggest that. And there's nothing in the data to suggest that that happens with adults either. There's also no biologically plausible mechanism through which th that would occur. Between the virus and the vaccine, doctors say the greatest risk is COVID-19. COVID has bad complications with children. Doesn't have it with all children, but has many. And it also has the complications in this young group of having long-term issues, whether it's having symptoms that last longer than two months, which is the long COVID that people talk about, or developing a very serious life-threatening condition called multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. And if I have a choice, I'd rather use this super safe vaccine mm -hmm. to get them back into school and back to their normal life. I'm Britt Conway reporting. With that news of the vaccine, that could mean almost 3 million children are eligible for the vaccine right here in Texas. Yesterday morning, a local pediatric infectious disease specialist joined Max Massey for our leading essay segment to answer questions about what the shot means for children here. We know a lot of parents and families have a lot of questions ranging from safety to possible side effects of the vaccine. We actually had a bunch of viewers reach out with those questions. So Dr. Tess Barton with UT Health San Antonio joined us. We discussed a lot. We talked about side effects, safety, efficacy, and some of our local families' top concerns. Take a listen to part of the conversation. So this vaccine looks very effective. The trial showed it to be just over 90% effective at, at preventing symptomatic disease. Um, you know, of course, it's not it's not 100% effective at preventing getting infected in the first place, um, but it is actually quite quite effective. And actually, that 90% effectiveness, um, all of the cases that they had during the trial were after July, so they look like they were during the Delta surge, and I think that's really promising. You can watch the entire discussion right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. We have leading essay every Sunday morning, 8 a.m. So we'll see you next Sunday, guys. Back to you. Thank you, Max. 537, about 56 degrees. The Astros, they still have a chance at winning the World Series. They were able to pull out the win in Game 5 last night. We'll have more on that game later in sports. No Shave November is here after the break. Why some of the guys are saying bye-bye to their razors this month. I also love all these selfies. <laughs> Looking good, guys. All right, 56 degrees at 538 this morning. Mike says to expect a cool front later in the week. He'll explain when we come back. We're loving our new animation, aren't we? Love it. Very cool. So a month-long journey is about to begin for some of the men here at KSAT, including Mark Austin. It will never be flowing like that, but today marks the start of No Shave November. It is, of course, a web-based nonprofit. It's raised over $12 million since its inception back in 2009. All that money raised goes towards cancer research, treatment, and prevention. And here's what some of the men at KSAT had to say about joining the cause. 
Uh, Dylan, Coll Dylan Collier said, every person I know has been impacted by cancer in its various forms. My father and grandfather, just a couple of my loved ones who have died from this terrible disease. No Shave November is my annual opportunity to use the platform of television to put a spotlight on this fight and raise money for continued efforts to combat cancer. And Stephen Cavasso said No Shave November is not just about how much you can grow, but how much you can give. So many wonderful organizations will benefit, and the money we raise can really make a difference. And GMSA photographer Asia Bermea said, This is my first time to take part in No Shave November. Usually, don't do it for a selfish reason. I don't like having a beard. However, I'm participating this year because having a beard for a month is nothing compared to those who have to go through cancer treatments weeks on end. Well said. We'll have more information on our website. Head to ksat.com slash no shave. There you can make a donation, and many of us, uh, including my KSAT Mark Austin page on Facebook, I will be updating you all the time, including links to the KSAT team straight to the No Shave website. But we are looking forward to it this year. We had such a successful year last year. Yeah. The, the year before, and then last year even better. So yes. this year, the goal is to, you guys were top five in the country out top, of groups. Out of groups, and I think we raised 10,000 this last year. So, I believe Max Massey was our winner, uh, was he not? I think it was close between Max and Mike. Mike I know they're yes. going back and Max, forth. Yeah, I think Max had it by a whisker. A whisker. Yes. Ooh, so those pictures we saw are just the, the, the starting. Four, the before the, the, pictures. The four, so we're gonna be showing them throughout the month. We are, we're yeah. gonna keep you posted. And uh, good luck to everybody here at Team KSAT. And we are looking forward to the month. Just bear with us as we uh, as we grow out of beards for a great cause. 543, about 56 degrees. What a game. The Cowboys taking down the Vikings in Minnesota. We have the highlights from last night's game coming up. Astros live to see another day. They rallied past the Braves and won game five last night, nine to five. It ran late too. Carlos Correa and the rest of the team finally broke out the bats and just in time before the Braves won the whole darn thing. Houston, the first team to win game five on the road when trailing three to one in the series since the 1992 Atlanta Braves. Now they need an even bigger win to take home the championship. Series now goes back to Houston. Game six tomorrow night at 7.09. Atlanta still leads the series three games to two. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys getting an exciting last minute win in Minnesota, even without Dak Prescott backup quarterback Cooper Rush subbed in for Dak. 325 yards, two second half touchdowns. Last one, a five yarder to Amari Cooper with 51 seconds left. Cowboys beat the Vikings 20 to 16 on Sunday night football. Cooper had eight catches for 122 yards. CeeDee Lamb had six receptions for 112. Next up for the Cowboys, Denver Broncos in Arlington at noon on Sunday. Spurs taking on the Pacers in Indiana tonight at 6 o'clock, hoping to get back-to-back -back wins after being the defending NBA champion, Milwaukee Bucks. Oh, and you guys have been so great sharing your Halloween pictures with us, so we wanted to show them off one more time. This is, of course, our Stephanie Serna and her daughter, Rooney. They are dressed as matching Cuellas. Love it. Super oh. cute. And there's Rooney with Mike Osterhage in his orange polo shirt. And here is our weekend crew. Max was a sailor. Sarah did a great job. She actually had a full green screen outfit on. Mm -hmm. She was uh, sunny and chance of clouds. And then there I am as E.T. E which I contend was Sarah just trying to stay warm in an ever cold studio. Just, you know, <laughs> really just being my creature self there. Yeah, you guys yeah. had a lot of fun. Happy Halloween, everybody. All right, Monday morning, let's check on traffic with Samuel King in for Steven. Looked like a lot of fun, everybody. I did not dress up, so there's that, but I had candy. It's <laughs> always fun. Uh, this is 35 at Judson. Traffic flowing well uh, in this area this morning, so let's take a look at that uh, travel time. Uh, 19 minutes each direction, 18 to 19 minutes between I-35, uh, between New Braunfels and loop 410 on I-35. You see that crash icon there? We were telling you about that crash. That crash is cleared there on 281 on the north side, so that's good news. We do have a new crash reported here. This is a loop 410 southbound just past 
I-10. So we'll keep an eye on that over the next uh, 15, 20 minutes or so and see how that impacts things. But so far, things still looking good on the east side on 410, uh, 35 to 37, 12 minutes in each direction there. So that's uh, pretty good this morning. So uh, we'll keep an eye on this uh, again, 35 uh, looking good. And we'll keep an eye on Loop 410 on the west side too as traffic starts to build as people start heading to work and school this morning, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Hey, Mike, uh, last night was beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, little humid at times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was you could just kind of sense it mm -hmm. a little more humidity. Same thing with this morning. It's not like you know, you walk outside and it, it slaps you in the face or anything, but you just kind of notice it's a whole lot different than what it was Saturday morning and uh, late last week, and it's going to be sticking around the humidity will for at least about the next 48 hours. Then we have a big front moving on through here, so um, can't really see any clouds right now. There's a couple of them out there and a hint of fog. Uh, the only place uh, reporting anything is just Castroville, just a a little bit of reduced visibility, so not a big deal. Mid upper 50s and some low 60s around the area right now. And these numbers, so 60 degrees on the dew point scale is that that threshold number. So you get above 60, yes, you start to feel the humidity. But again, it's it's just enough where you can almost kind of smell it a little bit. And it's almost that that dampish cool. You get more moisture in the atmosphere and instead of dry air, which dry air is actually a very good insulator, the moisture tends to draw the, the heat away from your body. So it's almost kind of a dampish, coolish morning. Um, in other words, light jacket is not a bad idea. So humidity remains around. Dew points are OK through today. Tomorrow they start to go up early on Wednesday. Then that next big front moves on through here and that's going to knock the humidity out and also really pull in some much colder temperatures. So here's a computer model through today. Not much going on. Tomorrow morning we'll have some clouds hanging around here. Mixture of sunshine and clouds throughout the day tomorrow. Then this particular model does have a couple of showers trying to show up early on Wednesday morning and we'll start to see more developing as we go in through the day on Wednesday as the front moves on through here. And here's a, a longer range computer model and this has some of that rain again developing Wednesday morning moving across the area with the front throughout the day Wednesday into early Thursday morning and then that will continue to clear out in the afternoon on Thursday. We'll see some sunshine later on in the afternoon, but boy, it is not going to get warm by any stretch. We'll be only in the low 60s for a high temperature on Thursday morning. So here's what's going on right now. When you have these upper level wind lines, <coughs> excuse me, moving straight west to east, call a zonal pattern. There's not much of a change with this type of configuration. So that's the case today, tomorrow. Then we go into Wednesday and here those wind lines start coming in here out of the north. And that's the front that's going to move on through here, bring in some much chillier air. And that'll be the case Thursday, Friday, and really through the week. The weekend looks great. The high is going to try and build back in here, but still we'll have fantastic weather hanging around here in through the, uh, the weekend. So we just get through midweek. That's transition day. And today it is going to be kind of warm, mm, you know, leaning, wanting to be humid, I guess is the best way to describe it. 75 degrees, mostly sunny skies at noon. High temperature today up to 81. So we are going to be on the above normal side. And then we get into the next couple of days. More of the same tomorrow, although a little bit, a uh, little bit more in the way of humidity and starting off Wednesday morning. Front moves through mid 70s on Wednesday, cooler in the hill country. So this is going to be one that may kind of kind of flirt with the hill country first of all, and then work its way down through here. So only low 60s Thursday, Friday. Good looking weekend though. Wow. Cool mornings, nice afternoon. Fall back. Check those yeah. smoke alarm batteries. Yay. Yes, so smoke alarms and all anything you need to do on that regular basis, do it on uh, Sunday morning or Saturday. We are on it. I'm yep. excited. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 552, about 57 degrees. Coming up next on GMSA, a look at the top five earning movies at the weekend box office. Welcome back. Which movie collected the most treats at the Halloween weekend box office? Seeing this, David Daniel has early estimates for the top five films. This is about me wanting to live without you. Venom, Let There Be Carnage took fifth place, scaring up $5.8 million for a domestic total of $190 million. The Japanese animated adventure My Hero Academia, World Heroes Mission, opened in fourth place with $6.4 million. No Time to Die stayed in third place, earning $7.8 million to reach $133 million domestic. There's nothing inside that man but pure evil. Halloween Kills held on to second place, taking in eight and a half million dollars. It's at 86 million domestic. But I want you to die with honor. 
June dug in and kept the crown in its sophomore weekend, making $15.5 million for a 10-day total of $69 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. You'll find it in sweet and savory foods, breakfast foods and desserts. First of November is kickoff for the holiday season for many, but it's also National Cinnamon Day. Today celebrates the spice that's the flavor of the season. There would be no pumpkin spice without cinnamon, no cinnamon buns or snickerdoodle cookies either. In fact, sales data from 2018 showed that cinnamon was the most often purchased of all the holiday spices. McCormick and Company founded National Cinnamon Day in 2019 to celebrate the most popular spice in America's kitchens. So start the day off right by adding ground cinnamon to your morning coffee or by topping your toast with cinnamon and sugar. Oh, that sounds so good, doesn't it, Mike? Off. Yes. Yes, sir. All right. Still ahead on GMSA at six. Worst Fest about to kick off up in New Braunfels. There's a special surprise at the iconic Hill Country Festival this year. We've got the scoop. At a northeast side fast food drive in becomes the scene of a shooting. We've got the very latest. Samuel King tracking traffic for you. We now have folks on the roads and it's getting busy out there. 35 places like 35 and Weedner. Much more to come right here. On GMSA, it's Monday, November 1st. Thanks for starting your day with us. We will be back. This morning, San Antonio police are trying to figure out what sparked a fire at a west side home overnight. We'll tell you what we know. And the Astros say not yet, not done at all. A recap of their Game 5 World Series win late last night and a look ahead to Game 6. 57 degrees at 6 a.m. this morning. It's Crispy out there, chilly out there. Will these cooler temps continue? Michael, let us know in just a bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We hope you had an awesome Halloween weekend. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is November 1st. The whiskers are in, and so is Sarah Costa. So happy to be next to your whiskers. Yes, <laughs> No Shave November has officially begun. You know, and I really love seeing all the selfies with the progression of all of our KSAT crew members. We have photographers, mm -hmm. you know, uh, on air reporters, anchors. We have about 13 guys participating this year. Much more to come here in the coming uh, 30 days or so. But Mike is uh, joining us here on the, uh, in the as part of. And you came in second place last year. Yeah, yeah. Max and I were going neck and neck there for a while. A lot of a lot of folks donated, and overall, it's a big team effort. You know, it's kind of bragging rights among us. But um, yeah, no, the, the team effort as far as how much uh, gets raised for a lot of really good causes. So mm -hmm. and it raises awareness, uh, obviously. You know, with breast cancer. Uh, awareness month for mm -hmm. the ladies, but for the guys, you know, sometimes men aren't as as upfront talking about health issues. Correct, so, yeah. correct. And the and the number of cancers and and conditions that No Shave November applies to now is getting bigger every year. So more on that in, again in the days and weeks to come. Exactly. All right. This morning you step outside. Um, it's not humid, but you can kind of kind of smell it a little bit and uh, you might need a jacket as well because with that extra humidity it's almost kind of a dampish cool out there. Mole is on the, the low side and uh, we're going to have a beautiful day today. It couldn't have been nicer over the weekend. Saturday morning dipped down to 46 degrees. That was the coolest we've seen officially here in town since way back uh, right around the third week of March <laughs> earlier this year. 56 this morning so we're 10 degrees above that and we're going to see a few clouds hanging around here and then more sunshine mixed in later on today 75 at noon so already up to just about the normal high by noon and then we're going to finish up at uh, right around 80 81 degrees later on today so it's going to be a, another good looking day today uh, again the humidity will be okay we'll start to see more humidity come in here tomorrow and then especially early wednesday preceding the front which moves through on wednesday and it's going to be a pretty good one boy it's going to really knock temperatures down and some rain associated as well details coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority samuel king is gracing us with this present to start, to start off the new month of November. What's going on, sir? Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone out there. Stephen taking uh, this November 1st off. We're taking a look here on the west side, Loop 410 at Ingram. Might uh, been if you live out in that area or you travel there, you might have uh, realized that there's a closure there this weekend. Those lanes have reopened and we're starting to see uh, traffic out there. So keep that in mind if you're starting your day, heading to work, school or running errands. Now on the east side, so this is east side, Loop 410 at I-10. Still watching situation here just south of I-10 on the east side. Had a crash there, but things still looking fine. You have your usual delays there right at the Loop 410 I-10 interchange. Again, Loop 410 on the east 
east side there is a crash there so uh, watch out for that you see a couple of icons might see this icon here in 281 north that, that crash has been cleared so uh, let's take a look one more time this is a uh, loop 410 at ingram things flowing well coming up in the next 15 minutes we'll have a look at your travel times around the area guys Thank you, Samuel. A man is in the hospital this morning after he was shot and robbed at a Northside apartment complex. It happened around two this morning at the Tuscany Park Apartments on Patricia. That's not far from Blanco Road and West Avenue. Police say the victim is in his 20s. He was on his way to a party when he was shot once in the backside. He was taken to the hospital. He's expected to be OK. The suspect still on the loose. New this morning, cleanup underway following an overnight house fire on the west side. Happened around 1015 on Cordelia. That's near West Commerce and South General McMullen. Firefighters say one was, say no one rather, was living in the home and the windows were boarded up. Crews were able to quickly knock out the flames. No word yet what sparked the fire. One person is dead after a shooting at a Halloween party up in Texarkana. Officials say the suspect has now turned himself in. The 21 year old man now charged with aggravated assault and additional charges are pending. Police say the suspect opened fire in a crowd of nearly 200 people on Sunday around midnight. One person was taken to a hospital where he later died. Nine others were hurt in that shooting in Texarkana. The go ahead for Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for kids 5 to 11 could happen this week. That's right. The vaccine has already received emergency use authorization from the FDA. Now the CDC's vaccine advisors are set to vote tomorrow and then the CDC director expected to officially recommend it so kids ages 5 to 11 could be getting their shots as soon as Wednesday. But only about a quarter of parents say they'll get their children vaccinated right away. Two thirds say they're worried it could affect their child's future fertility. There's nothing in the data uh, to suggest that and there's nothing in the data to suggest that that happens with adults either. Doctors still say the benefits of the vaccine outweigh the risks. Meanwhile, Moderna says the FDA needs more time to review its COVID-19 vaccines for teenagers. Yesterday, the vaccine maker said the administration wants to review the risk of heart inflammation in its vaccine kids ages 12 to 17. Moderna predicts the review might delay emergency use authorization for its vaccine for this age group, age group through Jan till January. Also said the review would delay its application for its vaccine in younger children. World leaders from nearly 200 countries are arriving in Glasgow, Scotland today, including President Biden. They're gathering for uh, the Conference of Parties. It is considered one of the most important climate summits in years. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest from Glasgow. Day two of COP26, or Conference of the Parties, is all about the world leaders from nearly 200 countries. They'll be kicking off crucial negotiations by laying out their visions to tackle climate change. I think you're going to see we've made significant progress and uh, more has to be done, but uh, it's going to require us to uh, continue to focus on what China's not doing, what Russia's not doing, and what Saudi Arabia is not doing. The annual summit is considered especially pivotal this year. Experts say the clock is ticking and that nations need to act fast to prevent catastrophe. I know that we have an unprecedented negotiations agenda ahead of us, but I believe that this international system can deliver. It must deliver. The goal of the two-week conference, come to a written agreement on how to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, phasing out coal, and allocating the finances for that. We must make progress here in Glasgow. Diplomats and climate experts will also review progress on the Paris Climate Accord to help prevent the average global temperature from rising more than 1.5 degrees Celsius compared with levels before the Industrial Revolution. But a recent analysis by the UN showed even if nations met their current targets, the planet could still see that temperature increase 2.7 degrees Celsius by the end of this century. The rapidly changing climate is sounding an alarm to the world to step up on adaptation to address loss and damage and to act now. And many are concerned about the success of this year's conference with leaders of some top polluters like China and Russia not in attendance. Rena Roy, ABC News, Glasgow, Scotland. 
In your morning consumer headlines, striking workers at John Deere are now set to vote tomorrow on a new contract proposal that offers bigger raises and bonuses than a deal they rejected three weeks ago. It's the first strike at the farm equipment maker in 35 years. More trouble for travelers this time on American Airlines. Nearly 2,000 flights had to be canceled over the weekend. It supposedly started with gusty winds at American's main hub up in Dallas and then snowballed when pilots and flight crews could not get to all the right places. Right now, 608, about 57 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, we introduce you to a little girl who's getting a head start of the season of giving. We'll show you how she's helping hundreds of kids in need. The president addressing the global supply chain issues at the G20. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, how his administration plans to tackle rising prices. And outside with live cam, another strong cold front is on the horizon. And those four magical words from Mike Osterhage, grilled cheese and soup, might be on the menu. He'll explain how chili could get coming up. Well, overnight, President Biden wrapping up his G20 meetings in Rome with leaders from the world's largest economies. One of the major topics is the global supply chain issues. ABC's Ike Ajachi is in Washington this morning with more. President Biden hosting an event with 14 countries and the European Union to specifically address the global supply chain issues, causing everything from delays in shipping to rising prices for goods and services. Biden pointing to the pandemic. Ending the pandemic is the ultimate key to unlocking the disruptions we're all contending with. The president says his administration is identifying bottlenecks and working with other countries to help make sure when COVID flares up, critical manufacturing continues uninterrupted. Now that we have seen how vulnerable these lines of global commerce can be, we cannot go back to business as usual. But after the meeting, the president was asked why American workers weren't returning to the labor force as soon as his administration had hoped. Biden says the economy is transforming, pointing to workers' capacity to negotiate for high wages. What you're seeing here is a combination of the desire of people to be able to change professions, to be able to do more and, and take care of their families. Still, efforts to speed up supply chain issues here at home continue. In Los Angeles, port officials applying pressure, voting to fine ocean carriers that hold shipping containers at ports for extended periods of time. The Biden administration pointing to the private sector. Fundamentally, it's up to the producers, the shippers, and the retailers, and we're doing everything we can to help them move those goods across uh, infrastructure that's often outdated. You know, people say to me, will Christmas gifts be delivered, to which I say, call FedEx. You know, that, that isn't what the government does. The president also announcing a deal with the EU. He says he'll scrap Trump era tariffs on steel and aluminum, and in exchange, the EU will get rid of tariffs on things like American whiskey and motorcycles. The White House says the agreement should help lower costs. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Well, Halloween is over and Christmas is just around the corner and one little girl is already in the holiday spirit. Nine year old Bethany Aguilar has spent the past few months raising money to buy hundreds of Christmas toys for all children in need. It all started with a lemonade stand. Then she started selling crafts and plants. Once she had enough, she hit the stores. I did find a lot of toys, but I felt like the kids there were going to feel happy and I didn't really want to really bother getting a lot of toys for myself. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get some for the kids in need. Bethany decided to give the toys to the Christian Assistance Ministry Emergency Christmas Toy Closet. She is still raising funds for children in need to see how you can help her. Just look for this story on What's Up South Texas tab on KSAT.com. 615. We're going to check in with Samuel King. How are the roads looking? Oh, good morning. It's, we'll start with a look at uh, travel times there, Mark and Sarah. 24 minutes coming in from Bernie on I-10, 26 minutes from Bulverde on 281, and 25 minutes on 35 coming in from New Braunfels into downtown San Antonio. So things are looking fairly good this morning. But we uh, here will go over to the wall and take a look at 35 at Wheatner. As we mentioned, 35 seems to be flowing well this morning. But we do have a couple of issues out there. One, this is a 281 northbound at Bitters. Uh, there is a vehicle fire uh, reported, but you see 281 still in the green, and we mentioned that travel time still looking fairly good there. Still watching uh, this situation on the east side. This is Loop 410 southbound 
at I-10 or just a bit south of I-10, a crash uh, reported there. So let's take a look at Loop 410 on the east side between 37 and 35, still about 12 minutes each direction. So that's fairly good and we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Here's the other travel times uh, around the region, as, as we mentioned, and this is 35 once again at Wheatner. So a couple of issues out there, but uh, people are getting out on the roads, but so far things are flowing well. We'll continue to keep an eye on it, guys. Thank you very much, Samuel. And Mike, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this weekend was perfect, but is that perfect kind of weather going to continue through the week? We're going to have a cool front at some point. Well, I'll put it this way. The next weekend is going to be perfect as well. So uh, today's not bad starting off. Uh, I think as far as the front coming through and some rain and colder temperatures, that's pretty darn nice on top of that. But yeah, as far as perfect fall weather like we had uh, Saturday and Sunday, especially yeah, this upcoming weekend is going to be every bit as much of a prize winner. This morning we're starting off in the mid 50s with just a hint of uh, just a hint of humidity out there, so enough to warrant a jacket or light sweatshirt and then 81 after school today. Mostly sunny skies. Uh, take a look outside. Boy, we're going to have a good looking sunrise this morning. Maybe a couple of uh, clouds hanging ar around here. So the normal or average temperatures at this time of year, we are going to be dropping down 10 degrees throughout the month of November. So right now it's 77 and 55. So we're starting off just about exactly normal. Just to put it in perspective, we're down to 46 on uh, Friday morning and we're going to be a little bit above that, the 77, and that's going to be the case tomorrow as well. Then we go into next Monday, we lose three degrees on each end of the uh, the normal scale, the average scale, and in two weeks, 72 and 50, and right before Thanksgiving, 70, 48, and by the end of the month, the normal high temperature is 67 degrees, normal low is 45. Now again, those are the averages. Um, you know, you rarely hit exactly a normal or average temperature, and that's why we do have the averages out there 57 in town 48 Bernie stage 49 in comfort uh, these numbers are like I said right about where they should be and the dew points are not bad again put it on the scale we're below 60 so that's the threshold where you really start to feel the humidity and kind of sense it when you step outside and obviously more humidity than what we had over the weekend and it's going to stay on the humid side and kind of go up a little bit especially going into tomorrow and Wednesday morning early then the front moves on through here. That's going to knock the humidity out for the uh, the end of the week, and that's going to allow some cooler air to uh, come in here as well. Or cooler air will be coming in with that. So a few clouds are showing up right now on the uh, satellite picture. And boy, just go not too far up to the north, and there's a big old winter storm moving through the dead center of the country right now, but that's moving straight to the east. And that's kind of a zonal pattern that we're in right now, which for us doesn't mean any big changes around here. No big weather system changes, at least for the next couple of days. But once we get into, like I said, the mid middle part of the week, we're going to have more clouds in here Tuesday and then overnight into Wednesday and a few showers along and ahead of that front and even lingering behind it. So it's not going to be one of those that clears us out immediately. We'll have some overrunning, which means it's going to be cold. It's going to be kind of wet, especially Wednesday night into early Thursday, and it's going to be just a kind of a just a mm, kind of a morning on Thursday, and then it's going to stay cool throughout the day and we'll clear out a little bit going into the afternoon hours on Thursday. And then, like I said, the weekend upcoming right now looks fantastic. 75 degrees, mostly sunny skies today at noon, high temperature up to 81. So again, we're going to be what, about four degrees above normal, definitely on the warm side today. And then tomorrow, same situation, a little more humidity. Wednesday, front moves on through here, and we'll see some showers moving into the area, and then it's going to be wet and cold, especially the first part of the day, Thursday. Uh, rain will come to an end about midday. And then, again, look at that weekend. Lows in the 40s and about 50, highs about 70. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and you set the clocks back before you go to bed Saturday night. Yes. Win -win Double ooh. Situation. It's almost got Mike dancing a little jig over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was it. The only, the only part of that was a half plie. I don't okay. dance on camera. So uh, that half plie. <laughs> Thank you, Barishnikov. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> How many years have you done the Nutcracker? I think this will be, because didn't do it last year, I think this will be year six. Our uh -huh. favorite mother, uh -huh. Ginger. There you go. Yes. And thank you, Mr. Brishnikoff. Right now, <laughs> 620, about 57 degrees. Well, still ahead on GMSA. Ooh, the Cowboys' win streak continues after they take down the Vikings. That more in our morning sports wrap.
with moderate to severe psoriasis or psoriatic arthritis are rethinking the choices they make, like the splash they create, the way they exaggerate, the surprises they initiate. Otesla, it's a choice you can make. Otesla is not an injection or a cream. It's a pill that treats differently. For psoriasis, 75% clearer skin is achievable with reduced redness, thickness, and scaliness of plaques. For psoriatic arthritis, Otesla is proven to reduce joint swelling, tenderness, and pain. And the Otesla prescribing information has no requirement for routine lab monitoring. Don't use if you're allergic to Otesla. It may cause severe diarrhea, nausea, or vomiting. Otesla is associated with an increased risk of depression. Tell your doctor if you have a history of depression or suicidal thoughts, or if these feelings develop. Some people taking Otesla reported weight loss. Your doctor should monitor your weight and may stop treatment. Upper respiratory tract infection and headache may occur. Tell your doctor about your medicines and if you're pregnant or planning to be. Otesla, show more of you. Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Cowboys' impressive start to the season continues. Dallas improves to 6-1, and one, and many fans are starting to think Super Bowl. Cowboys won last night despite Dak Prescott being sidelined with an injury. Backup Cooper Rush led the Cowboys to a 2016 victory over the Vikings. Head coach Mike McCarthy says he is proud of Cooper's performance. It's a difficult place to play. And, you know, we, we knew we wanted to you know, be balanced. And, you know, I can't say enough about, you know, Cooper, you know, being ready, number one, to jump in there and go. And uh, was productive, did an excellent job, commanded the offense. And the other Texas football team is on life support. Texans drop another game yesterday to the visiting L.A. Rams. Final from Houston, Rams 38, Texans 22. Houston falls to 1-7. and seven on the season. But hey, at least the Strohs won last night. That's good news. Very excited the Strohs won. 625, 57 degrees. We have a lot more heading your way in our next half hour, including why some of the guys here on GMSA are going to start looking a little scruffy. It's all for a good cause. We kick off No Shave November. Plus, new details about COVID-19 vaccine and kids. What parents need to know about tomorrow's vote from the CDC. And checking Trans Guide right now. We do have traffic out there right now. It is building, but it's been fairly light this morning overall. Samuel King in for Steven Cavazos. He'll get you updated coming up at the bottom of the hour. You're watching GMSA, and we will be right back. A man and woman in line for some water burger on the northeast side when a gun accidentally goes off. We'll tell you what we know. Outside with live cam, it was a wonderful Halloween weekend. We wake up to a new work week and a new month. Mike says another strong cold front is on the way. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is November 1st. So happy to be joining you guys yeah. on this Monday. Thank you so much for starting your day with us on GMSA. I had so much fun yesterday. It was Halloween, dressed up. I went as E.T. Yes, you did. Did. <laughs> did. Um, you know, just trying to have some fun. It was a lot of fun last night, and we're getting reports from around San Antonio. A lot of folks actually ran out of candy yep. this year, which was a big deal compared to last year. Where we couldn't give away the candy, right? Which yeah, we had kind of our job anyway. last year. No trick or treaters, and this yeah. year, uh, yeah, just a, a bunch of them again. So it was it was so fun to see the little kids out there yeah. all dressed up and it everything. Was. And just and I, a, I think the weather actually played a big part uh, too. Was oh nice. yeah, it played it played a huge part in that. And uh, you know, we had it started to get a little warm. The afternoon, but boy, by the time trick or treating started, the dew points dropped a little bit and it was really comfortable yesterday, uh, late afternoon and in the evening hours. And we've got a couple of clouds starting off right now. Temperature stands at uh, 57 degrees, dew points at 54. So obviously, with these two numbers running neck and neck, no wind out there and mostly clear skies. Just be on the lookout for a slight patch or two of fog. I haven't seen much of anything, some around, um, right around uh, Collierville this morning or not cut you very um excuse me, off to the west over toward Hondo. Mold is on the low side at 270, and we have partly cloudy skies. Coolish, I mean, just enough humidity out there this morning that makes it kind of a dampish cool. And then mostly sunny skies, kind of humid today. Not too bad, but the humidity will definitely kind of come up over the next couple of days. And uh, then we have the front moving through on Wednesday. Um, a couple of showers are going to be developing as well. And temperatures will be right around, say, mid-70s 
and about 70 cooler up to the north and then it's going to get much cooler, especially Thursday. We're going to have some rainy conditions in the first part of the day and it's going to stay on the cool side and then we're setting up for a great looking weekend after that uh, wet start on Thursday morning. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King, what's going on, sir? Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone out there. Still looking uh, fairly good if you're starting your day heading out to work or school or whatever you need to do this morning. 29 minutes if you're coming in from Seguin, 24 minutes from Lavernia, and 29 minutes from Floresville. Looking at some flashing lights here. This is Loop 410 at Starcrest on the uh, northeast side. We'll try and figure out uh, what's going on there, but you can definitely see uh, those flashing lights there, so watch out for that. Let's take a look at 35 inside of Loop 410 on the southwest west side uh, looking good 10 minutes between downtown and the southwest side if you're coming in also looks to be fairly good on the coming in from the northeast side as well that crash we're telling you about on i-10 on the east side seems to have cleared so that's good news there and we'll have another update coming up in a few minutes with what's going on but first let's go over to sarah thank you samuel a scary scene for a man and a woman who were in a fast food drive through on the northeast side when a gun went off it happened at a Whataburger on Audrey Pond Road near Bulverde and Jones Maltzberger. That's where San Antonio police say the two were in the car in the line when the man was showing the woman a handgun. That's when the woman accidentally fired the gun, hitting the man in the arm. He was taken to the hospital and expected to be okay. Happening today, jury selection will begin in the capital murder trial of the man charged in the death of a beloved HEB employee. R.C. Curtis is accused in the 2015 murder of 75-year-old Paula Boyd. He was arrested and charged with her murder four months after it took place, and he's believed to be her grandson-in-law. Boyd was found dead in her Northside apartment. An autopsy report later revealed she died from blunt force trauma and strangulation. If found guilty, Curtis is facing life in prison without parole. This week, kids 5 to 11 years old could be eligible to roll up their sleeves for a COVID-19 vaccine as the authorization process for Pfizer's vaccine for that age group rolls right along. CNN's Britt Conway has more from doctors who break down some concerns. Virus versus vaccine. You're going to do great. And go. And the go ahead for Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for kids 5 to 11 could happen this week. Recommendation of emergency use authorization from the FDA's vaccine advisors. Check. Official EUA from the FDA. Check. The CDC's vaccine advisors are set to vote tomorrow, and then the CDC director is expected to officially recommend it. So kids 5 to 11 could be getting their shots as soon as Wednesday. This is awesome. There are no serious side effects given this lower dose of the vaccine to this lower group of kids, and it still protects kids from getting the infection. But only about a quarter of parents say they'll get their kids vaccinated right away. Two thirds say they're worried it could affect their child's future fertility. There's nothing in the data uh, to suggest that. And there's nothing in the data to suggest that that happens with adults either. There's also no biologically plausible mechanism through which th that would occur. Between the virus and the vaccine, doctors say the greatest risk is COVID-19. COVID has bad complications with children. Doesn't have it with all children, but has many. And it also has the complications in this young group of having long-term issues, whether it's having symptoms that last longer than two months, which is the long COVID that people talk about, or developing a very serious life-threatening condition called multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. And if I have a choice, I'd rather use this super safe vaccine mm -hmm. to get them back into school and back to their normal life. I'm Britt Conway reporting. It is a big week for the U.S. Supreme Court and the future of abortion in the state of Texas. Today, the court will hear arguments in two cases challenging the Texas law that bans abortions after six weeks in most cases. One case was filed by abortion providers, the other by the Justice Department. But both say the law conflicts with Roe versus Wade, which legalized abortion nationwide any time before viability, which can occur at around 24 weeks of pregnancy. Today's arguments will focus on the unusual construction of the law. Texas officials are not allowed to enforce it. Instead, private citizens from any state can bring a civil suit against anyone who helps a pregnant person seeking an abortion. The ban will remain in effect while these legal challenges play out.
Election day is tomorrow for the Texas Constitutional Amendments election. Voters will decide on eight proposed constitutional amendments in this statewide election. Proposals were approved by the Texas House and the Texas Senate this past session, but must be approved by a majority of voters before they are included in the state constitution as law. The constitutional amendments cover a range of topics, including taxes, judicial eligibility, religious freedom, and development. Votes can be cast in person or by mail. You can find more information about this election on KSAT.com and stay with us tomorrow for Election Day results. I just realized it looks like Ted Lasso with a grown out beard. I love it. I'm here for it. <laughs> a month long journey about to begin for some of the men here at KSAT. Today marks the start of No Shave November and I'm noticing it's it's more gray this year already. Oh, no. So it's time to ditch the razor and let that facial hair grow. No Shave November is a web based nonprofit that's raised over $12 million since it was started back in 2009. All that money raised goes towards cancer research, treatment, and prevention. Last year, the guys here at KSAT raised close to $10,000, and we rank fifth in the country for groups. This year, a total of about uh, 10 cancer foundations from, will benefit from these efforts. Sarah Svensson with the nonprofit says their mission to end cancer for all has never been more important. We're bringing all these organizations together and trying to give them the funds that they can use to further our research and figure out what the next steps are and how we can make this better in the future. All right, so all the guys in Team KSAT, we all have a reason why we're doing this. I'm doing no shave in memory of First Sergeant David Larson, an infantryman in the Army. His combat deployments around the world included places like Kosovo, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Dave survived a whole bunch of ambushes, firefights, even an IED blast, only to be diagnosed with colon cancer. After 26 years of service and lengthy medical treatments here in San Antonio, he lost his battle back in 2019. He left behind his wife, Simona, and their daughter, Charlotte. I'm doing this for all three of them. Even though I never met Dave in person, my respect for this soldier, son, husband, and father could not be deeper. Dave's life mattered. We have more information on our website. Head to ksat.com slash no shave. And there you can find out more about how to donate. You'll be hearing much more about No Shave November as we move through this entire and somewhat hairy month. And it's okay if there's more gray in the beard. It just, you know, makes you look distinguished, Mark. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Let's check out the time right now. 638, 56 degrees. Are you looking to do some renovations inside the house ahead on GMSA? We'll tell you when you should DIY or bring in the professional. TV shows and social media provide lots of DIY inspiration, making it seem like, well, anyone can be an interior designer, but there are some things only a pro should do. Wow, this is so true. In this morning's <laughs> Ask Angie segment, Jonathan Cotto talks about when it's the right time to bring an interior designer. When you're ready to redo a room or spruce up your whole home, new decor and a fresh coat of paint can make a big difference. But there's much more you could do to enhance the space. If a room or even your whole home are feeling a little stale, there are lots of ways to give it a fresh look. Depending on your budget, you could start small with just a fun accent wall, a new backsplash, or even some fresh decor. But if you're looking to do more of a refresh or get more out of the space that you already have, an interior designer could help really upgrade your game and bring a whole new look to your home. Interior designers can take the guesswork out of a project by showing you the finished room before the work even begins. Designers will put together mood boards and often even create 3D models of the finished space, so you know exactly what to expect. They can also offer recommendations for pros you might need to get the work done like carpenters to build custom shelving or painters to choose the right type of paint for your climate and the amount of light the room gets. You may have a vision for your room and a few key elements that you want to incorporate that can be the perfect place to bring in a designer. They can help bring those elements together, think about lighting, set the right focal point for the room, and also consider your home's architectural style. Bringing all these pieces together can make sure that you have a finished look in the end and something that doesn't stand out in the wrong way. 
Before hiring an interior designer, think about what your goals are for the space and try to get sense for what style you like. Designers usually start with a consultation to decide if they're a good fit for your project. And make sure to bring photos or inspiration to the meeting to help them understand your preferences. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. November here and so is Worst Fest, but this year the annual celebration of sausage in New Braunfels is going to look a little different. Not only is it the 60th year of the festival, it's also the first time guests will get to visit the brand new $13 million market plots that was destroyed in the fire back in 2019. And we've got the sneak peek of the iconic building over on KSAT.com. Worst Fest will run uh, November 5th through the 14th up in the beautiful city of New Braunfels. It's exciting. It is 644, 56 degrees. Samuel King in for Stephen on traffic. Things looking fairly uh, good uh, this morning still. Just a few issues here or there, but your travel time still in the green 27 minutes if you're coming in from Pleasanton on 37, 20 minutes from Castroville on Highway 90, and 17 minutes on 35 from Lytle to downtown. 16 minutes, see, even better. This is uh, Loop 410 at Starcrest. And we told you about this one earlier. This was a stalled vehicle here, but that seems to have cleared, so traffic uh, is flowing. So four minutes in between uh, 35 and 281, five minutes the other way. So that's fairly good right now. Taking a look at other parts of the area, if you're coming in from New Braunfels or Seguin, things looking fine, but you see some scattered issues, including this crash, Loop 410 at Commercial uh, on the south side, up getting two icons there. So if you're traveling on Loop 410 on the south side, uh, watch out for that over here in the next, uh, in the coming next 15, 20 minutes or so. Also on the northeast side, we mentioned uh, crashes earlier there, just south of I-10, starting to see that back up on Loop 410 northbound down to 39 miles per hour, even and lower as you're heading northbound on Loop 410 at I-10. And finally, some construction here and there throughout the area today, and this includes Wurzbach Parkway and Northwest Military Highway. On the uh, northwest side, there will be some alternating, not alternating lane closures, but a couple of lane closures in that area. If you drive in that area, you know that construction work does continue this morning, guys. All right, Steph was is off this morning because she was out and about with her family last night celebrating Halloween. She even stopped at Mike's house for trick or treating there. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was so cute. Oh, look at <laughs> so how what's the plural are. of Corella Deville? Corella Deville's Corella. or Corella's Deville? Cool. I don't know. Right? Oh. Like Corella's State Deville. Attorney's General. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And there's, and there's her there's, husband yeah, Louise. 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 Oh, right. Without a cost well. Should've. Yeah, they look great. <laughs> Should have been a Dalmatian. And, and little Rooney is so cute because she, I was sitting there passing out candy, and all of a sudden she just walks right up next to me. Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. Rooney. Yes. Hi, Mike. Rooney. These, these are my friends. These are my friends. Yes. <laughs> Lacks the bashful gene. Yes. yes. Oh, no. man. Not well, at all. They had a good time last night. Lots of fun. Happy mm -hmm. Halloween again to everybody. Yeah, and so many trick or treaters last night. It was just refreshing to have all the the kids and families out there trick or treating. So yeah, I ran out of candy too. That's always a good sign. That's that's well, wonderful. A little bit closer about, to normal, right? Buying about four of those big giant bags at the at the grocery store. Should have a fairly decent sunrise this morning. A couple of clouds hanging around here. 57 degrees. Right about uh, maybe a degree or two above the normal average low temperature, 59 Stinson, 49 in comfort. And we are about 10 or so above where we were Saturday morning, Saturday 46th, the coldest we've seen officially at the airport since way back about the third week of March. The humidity, these numbers are still on the comfortable side because the dividing line or the threshold is right at 60. That's when you really start to notice the humidity, but you go outside and you can kind of just kind of feel it a little bit, smell it near somewhat. The front that we are waiting for on Wednesday is actually in through the, uh, the panhandle right now. It's 38 Amarillo, 42 Lubbock, 45 at Midland, but it's going to take it a couple of days to move on through here. So it, it's a very shallow front that have a whole lot of oomph behind it for right now, but it will make it through here again during the day on Wednesday. A couple of computer models are a little bit um, differing as far as exactly when it comes through. One has a little earlier in the day, one has a little later on in the day, but boy, uh, in behind it, it is definitely the leading edge of some really cold air. Five right now is the temperature in Cutbank, 26 Bismarck and 28 in Casper. And as far as the rain associated with this, that also depends on exactly when the front comes on through. 
This particular computer model has a little bit sooner as far as the rain developing on Wednesday morning, obviously sooner up in portions of the hill country, and then that will continue to move on through here throughout the day, Wednesday overnight and into Thursday. And that's also when the colder air comes on in here. Now the rain should be moving out, say about mid morning or so on Thursday, but the cold air is going to be left behind. So we'll only be in the low 60s and that depends on how quickly the clouds clear out on Thursday, but it's going to be definitely chilly Thursday as well as going into Friday and then the weekend is going to be fantastic. Another great, great looking weekend. 75 degrees, mostly sunny skies at noon, almost at the normal average high temperature by noon and then 81 for high today, mostly sunny skies. Humidity is going to be there, not too awfully bad. Same thing tomorrow. It will start to creep up a little bit and going into Wednesday morning. And then we have the chance for showers, even a couple of thunderstorms as the front approaches and moves on through here Wednesday into Thursday and Thursday 63. That's it. So it's going to be definitely an oatmeal kind of a breakfast on Thursday mm -hmm. morning with those cold, damp conditions. And Sounds and good. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I was thinking about your grilled cheese the other day. I saw a new recipe and uh, one of the popular things to do, I'm not saying you're going to dip this in soup, okay, but you put uh, apple slices in your grilled cheese. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've, I've done that, that. With the uh, panini before. You put some apple slices in there, different yeah. flavors of cheese and everything. Great, especially a tart apple. There you works go. Works really yeah, well. Yeah, I think these were yeah. green apples and they were, yeah. they, were, they were cut razor thin. You have to be careful. It's hard mm -hmm. to cut them like that. Mm -hmm. Hey, fall back all also on Sunday. Yay. Yay. <laughs> yay. No, truly, this is the yay. Yes. <laughs> it's the spring forward that we're like, yay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Sunday okay. morning before you go to bed. And don't forget to check all the batteries and smoke alarms and things right. like that. So. Thank you, Mike. Good Thank chat. You, Mike. 650, about 56 degrees. And many people who suffer from depression and anxiety turn to apps for help, but do they actually work? That's tomorrow on GMSA. Great news, Stroh's fans. The Astros survived. The World Series continued last night. Atlanta jumped ahead early with four runs in the first. Brace fans thinking about that title when Houston came storming back. Astros win game five early this morning. Final score, nine to five. Their bats came alive on Halloween night. And with that win, game six will be in Houston tomorrow night at 7.09. Braves still lead the series three to two. If the Stroh's win tomorrow, there will be a game seven played on Wednesday night in Houston. San Antonio Spurs have a road matchup tonight with the Indiana Pacers. The Silver and Black will look to build off of their momentum following their victory over the defending champion Milwaukee Bucks. The game tonight is at 6 o'clock. After that, the Spurs will host the Mavericks, and that's set for Wednesday night at 7.30. 56 degrees at 651 this morning. Thank you so much for watching us, but stick around because Samuel King will have the latest on the traffic before you head out for work. Check. Hi guys, welcome back. Looking at some issues across the area. We'll start here on the uh, south side. Uh, had a crash reported at Commercial. Also one uh, reported over here at Morrison. So that's causing a bit of a slowdown on the 29 miles per hour there uh, at Commercial. So let's take a look at the travel times in the area. Still looking fairly good though. 8 to 12 minutes between I-37 and Palo Alto. This is a look at your other travel times across the region. Starting to see some buildup on 35 coming in from New Braunfels, 25 minutes coming in um, from Bernie and I-10, 22 minutes now coming in on Highway 90 from Castroville. Here is a look at Transguy 281 at Loop 410, traffic building there, 281 in San Pedro. Let's try to sneak in one more here. There we go, 410 at Ingram. You saw very quickly traffic flowing well, but building Mike. Good looking start to the morning and you can see the early stages of the sunrise won't be coming up for about another 50 minutes or so, but oh, it's going to be a pretty sunrise 56 in town, 49 comfort and 57 Castroville and humidity is OK this morning, maybe a dampish cool. Then we're going to have mold on the low side today and or it is on the low side, I should say updated counts going to be coming out in about oh, say hour or so and high today up to 81. Thanks, Thank guys. you, Mike. We'll see you back here. GMSA at 9. Fine.